Hey guys, I hope you're all well. A bit cooler today, it's actually lovely. Much better for working in. Right, it's Sunday morning and um, I've got a couple of jobs to do. It's sort of a day off, but not. Um, got some work to do on an XT600. Cracking bikes, absolutely cracking. And this one is, it's nice. Pretty good condition to be fair. This belongs to Gertrude. And we're going to do, well, I'm going to do a couple of jobs on it. Gertrude was across yesterday and we've done the forks. So the forks on this bike, let's have a look. There we go. Quite tidy, isn't it? Anyway, the forks on this bike were like a pair of pogo sticks. Absolutely terrible. Um, so we stripped them out yesterday. Uh, obviously, we had the front wheel out sorted all that out new grease on the bearings and stuff like that all the bearings were fine we cleared all the front brake caliper out washed all that out because that was a bit sticky that's all fine now um got all the old springs out the forks uh originally they're a shorter spring in here with a big spacer so we've fitted some hagon springs in there hagon hagon whatever however you pronounce it <clears throat> uh and it's much better so we spent yesterday morning sorting all that out to improve the front end on the bike. Next job is the bash plate. This is what I'm doing today. Amongst other things, I've been tinkering around over the weekend actually with other stuff. The RM over there, you'll see it's got a number board on. That's the original number board that I've cleaned up and it's all come up absolutely fantastic. But basically I've been tinkering around getting ready for a very busy week also on the m field remember i was messing about with the battery box that's all bolted on now <clears throat> and the wires going through passing through a grommet i think someone mentioned that in the comments yeah I i've done countless ones of them now yeah obviously they all pass through a grommet but thank you for mentioning it yeah it's very easy to miss stuff like that anyway Back to the XT. So what I'm going to do today is sort the bash guard out. So down here, we've got this thing. As we do plan to do a bit on these, some mild off-roading with this shoulder, which obviously I'm gonna find out more about on the 15th when I go to hospital again. So we're gonna do some mild stuff, but this bash plate, we're gonna modify it. Let me show you one that's off the bike because we've got one, a spare one that we're going to do the modifying. So we've got this plate here, this perforated plate. But here we've got these great big voids and they are big. So really it's not doing a lot, to be honest. You could quite easily get some fly up here, a big rock or anything like that. And then we're going to end up with a big hole in the engine. And that goes for both sides. This side looks even wider. You see that? Yeah, so to add a little bit of protection, we have got some punch plate right here. So I'm going to cut that to size and shape it. So it's going to need a little bit of shape in there. And fill then gaps up not sure about this one i'll see how that uh, fits on the bike i'll crawl around on the floor in a minute and have a look another job <clears throat> which i think needs modifying also everything needs modifying <laughs> is the mud flap we have a new mud flap for the front mud guard let's have a look at the old one the old one yeah it's a bit worse for wear that has melted so it's quite obvious when you're trapping along on the bike a little bit this thing's blowing up like marilyn monroe's skirt and resting against that hot exhaust so to me and you see that little alloy strip in there to me really we've got an aluminium strip with this one no, i think this one's actually steel i don't know i ain't had it out of the bag yet to me that needs a t-piece so far down so the bit that is flapping around 
can't reach the exhaust. Why haven't they spotted that? Why haven't they spotted that's a problem? And made that little sandwich plate into a tea piece? I don't know, because if we just go and fit that as it is, the same thing's gonna happen. It's gonna go along, it's gonna blow up, rest on the art exhaust and destroy it in an instant. So I think I'm gonna modify that as well. Main job today is get them perforated sheets into the bash plate, give it a coat of paint and swap them over. And then I'll be doing other things, probably off camera, getting ready for the week. Let's get stuck into that job. Many amazing job in sheds up and down the country have started on a cornflake packet. <laughs> Even gaskets, so I've heard. <laughs> anyway, and obviously a pair of scissors and a pen. I ain't got a pen. There it is. Hello, Blue. Blue's down here. Come here, come and say hello. I know what he is here. Can you get in shot? Oh. I know why Blue's here. It's empty. <laughs> You're not having me cornflake packet. <clears throat> this is all high tech stuff, Blue. It is. And you can't chew it up. It won't end up the right shape if you cut it up, will it? Hey, it definitely won't. Right, uh, where are we? I have no clue. Let's start by getting a flat piece of cardboard. something to do with boring football on the back so we'll get rid of that bit first right then get the ruler to start with. Obviously we've got to get all this manky paint off it as well. It looks like someone's just blasted a load of paint over rust. You smell blue. Whew. What have you been eating? It smells like Bodie's rear end. That's not pleasant. Whew. Come here, get rust in your eyes off this thing. fits in. So oh, that, that edge is curved as well. And then obviously we've got to shape it whichever way it's going to go. So yeah, it's not totally straightforward. And I would like to inset it. Hmm.
Because obviously when you're curving it, it's changing its shape all over the place. I think it's a little bit of guesswork. I think that's going to come off slightly. Anyway, I'll continue to mess about with this till I've got it right. It's it's close, and then we'll get on to the metal work bit. Right, I think we're somewhere near. that I think if we cut it to that shape we can do any more trimming on the metal work with a grinder so it sits in there as best as we can yeah now the next thing is we want it to sit best as we can within the whole punches that's going to be yeah nigh on impossible <laughs> but at least i think these are 20 mil holes we're still going to have plenty of welding points wherever it lands on there to be honest Yeah, I don't think it matters where we place it. It is what it is. And I think we'll go there. Not in my usual trick and do it in the middle and waste loads of material. I think we'll go there. <clears throat> and we've got what we've got. Simple as that. Right, marker pen. Right, you'll have to excuse the noise, I've got the compressor on. Ready to start DAing all that paint off. I think that'll do there. I'll say it's covering the main area to do the job it's intended to do. That pen's rubbish. Oh, I can just about see it. No, that really is rubbish. <laughs> Struggling for marker pens again. Let's go green. the grinder up. Right, that's that sorted then. Let's get a bit of this old paint off of here. got most of the paint off it doesn't look brilliant does it uh, what I'm gonna do now I've got this cut brush on the grinder I'm actually gonna try and dig some of the rust out now as much as we can get into
Okay, we got that fairly clean, as best as we can do really. That's took about an hour. <laughs> so, let's get a bit of shape into this. We may have to do a bit of trimming here and there to get it to slot in, but we'll start getting some shape in it first. And literally, let's open them up a bit more. Keep doing a bit, trying a bit. I'm definitely going to have to trim a bit more, I think. quite a bit more getting closer what I think I'll start doing now is trimming it to drop in welding it in the places where it's I've got it pretty good and then start tapping it round to the shape of the tube now we've got it somewhere near pretty good we've just got to get this corner around here down a little bit so I'm putting a couple of tacks here and there and then we should be able to tap that corner down around here just that little gap there Got it. Oh, quickly weld that up. That's the rust fizzling. Oh well, it's not the cleanest of metal. As long as we get it to stick, eh?
not the best. Right, that's one side. Them welds look like a five year old's done it. Absolutely terrible. It's fizzing up. Because uh, all the pitting and contamination. I'm not making excuses. Well, I am. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, I daren't dress the tube back anymore because I can only imagine it's really thin. If I go and dress it back anymore, obviously it's going to be weak and I'll end up blowing holes in it with a welder then. So we're just going to have to live with it. At least it's underneath. If you ever see this bike out, don't lie on the floor and look under there. It's not good. It's not, it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> but it's stuck. It's on there. Right, I'm going to get on with the other side. And then uh, we'll get some paint on it. sorted uh, the weld looks absolutely awful I think if you uh, close one eye and pour bleach in your open eye it might look okay but as I'm looking at it now it looks terrible not a lot I can do about that unfortunately e even if I've got this blasted I guarantee that all the inside of this tube is rusty and if your well's penetrating into the right into the tube it'll still fizz up I've had it before you know you've, you get really old stuff blasted you think it's fine you weld it and it looks absolutely awful but hey -oh, it's stuck that's all I can say about it maybe a generous coat of paint <laughs> it will look a bit better so that's what I'm going to do next. Get a drop of paint on it. Right, I've actually put some primer on this, even though I'm doing it with great colour for paint as well. To try and hide all the uh, all the pitting in there. It should look all right. At the end of the day, it's there to do a job, stopping the engine getting damaged. So the surfaces are not brilliant, the wells not brilliant, but luckily it's underneath the bike, sort of out of sight. I'm going to give it uh, one thin coat to start with, go and have a little bit of dinner and then come back up and give it a nice good heavy second coat. Right, moving forward a little bit, that's had a bit of time to go off, hanging up there. So I'm going to take the old one off and see if we can get it to get the old new one on. And we'll uh, wrap this old one up and put it away somewhere. Probably didn't mention that. Everything we do to this bike is going to be reversible 
so we can put it back to total stock standard uh, I'm gonna try that mud flap after this I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on as it is and see what it's like I say I think it needs a t-piece to stop it hitting that exhaust but we'll see I'll put it on and see what it's like uh, eventually we're gonna have the back end out of this bike the swing arm and the shock and service all that as well obviously not in that vi this video because that's a big job on its own and we'll give the swing arm a coat of paint as well just clean that up also tank it's a metal tank on these uh gertrude's got one of them big plastic tanks for it so sort of, i think it's like the paris dakar type tank and again this one bolts off that one bolts off on so that is reversible as well it would be a big shame to drop this bike and smack this tank in because it's in an absolute stunning condition yeah that uh, big plastic tank will be going on it anyway let's get this off we'll have a clean out under here as well parts of the bike that no one ever bothers to clean Also, you notice on this one, it's got pads on there. All they're there for, if this does get bashed, then pads it the engine and not the metal bars. So I'm gonna try and pop these off and put them on the other one. Again, if we put this back, they can come off the other one and go back onto this one, because I can't seem to find any of these. And they've only riveted on, so it uh, should be fairly easy. Gonna just diesel this is <clears throat> just get a coat on it and start loosening all the muck up I don't think it's going to come up perfect but might as well make it a little bit better or we can get in at it all Some mocks come off. There we go. Right, just getting these uh, little bump stops off. Like I say, it's only a rivet, so if you have to put them back onto this one, it's no big deal at all. out right that's all sorted ready to pop back on so these are different if i see one's curved look and one's straight obviously the curved one on that bit because that bit of tube's curved New stainless fixings as well. It's all posh. All posh apart from our really bad welding.
go, just leave us all and we're sorted. Now have this. I'm gonna put it on and just see what it's like. And then uh, when Gertrude comes over next, he can he can have a think about it. But I hello. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> hey, he's thinking. Mm, I could chew that. That that'll chew lovely. <laughs> Come on out a minute. <laughs> right, where was I? I don't know. I seem to be missing a, missing a screw. I've got a screw loose. All right, put the middle one on first. And then we can bend the bracket from that. It's a long run, isn't it? Right, where did I lose that screw? Right, I can't find that screw anywhere. That's ridiculous. I've searched absolutely everywhere. It's like there wasn't one in the packet. I'm not saying there wasn't, but... How can you lose a screw, like, walking from here to there? I can quite easily obviously I'll put three new ones in it that match if need be I'll have some knocking about somewhere anyway that'll do uh, that's that sorted like I say everything we're doing to this bike is going to be reversible because it's such a, a fantastic example of one of these you know it's very rare to find bikes like this that haven't been hacked up abused you know even down to the uh, the back piece here near enough everybody chopped these off just under the number plate and that one's still there you know, all the indicators not even a scuff on them absolutely perfect he's also looking for some indicators just to shove on there you know to save them ones because if he does take a tumble it's normally the indicators that get it first so we're going to find some, I don't know, some proper ones with bulbs in, not them horrible, horrible aftermarket LED things. I'm just going to give that a wipe. So you know, anything off another Yamaha, a Suzuki or a Honda that we can just put on there and bag them up and save them. I'll say he's got that huge fuel tank that's going to go on there. Um... And just go through and tidy the odd little bit up but as you can see it's not bad at all is it not that bad he ain't been abused which is really rare to see but that ain't come out too bad i guess i'll say that he's got a better chance of saving the engine because we do plan to do a bit of mild off-roading on this obviously i'm going to use the kx because i haven't got nothing like this so I've just had a mess about with the gearing on the KX actually, just to sort of calm it down a little bit for sort of these long country lanes, sweeping country lanes, the little country lanes that hardly anybody uses, but grass grows up in the middle, you know the sort. We plan on doing some of that around the mountains on these bikes, and like I say, some very mild trails where uh, I'm not gonna rip my shoulder out, but the KX is all uh, cleaned up all ready to rock all i'm going to keep an eye out for is the larger fuel tank for one of them they seem hard to find so um oh, well they're not hard to find the ones that i like are 500 pounds and that's out of the question <laughs> so i got i got my eyes peeled for a second hand one an ims fuel tank hopefully i'll find one eventually because i don't fancy spending 500 pound on a piece of plastic anyway yeah, I think that'll do. Oh yeah, I don't know if I told I actually had one of these. Um, God. 
let's say over 20 years ago, I had it brand new. And I remember, I'm sure it was 3495 on the road. Brand spanking new. What can you get for that now? Nothing. Nothing any good anyway. Yeah, I remember that. I did it for a while actually. I used to trap around on it and go everywhere. They're just a fantastic bike. A good all round bike. They're bulletproof. They just keep going and going and going. Not going to win any races, but you'll go anywhere all day long on that thing. You really will. They are a cracking bulletproof bike. Anyway, that'll do. A nice easy Sunday. Ready to crack back on tomorrow with all the other projects that we're doing. That'll do. Cheers for watching, guys. Take care.